Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you who weren't here for the first session, my name is Maria Troy, and I'm a project manager at Mind Intelligence. Um, for our final session this morning, we have a very interesting topic, the online conversation about wine. Um, we've brought together a panel of experts on this topic for you. Um, and because this is quite a contentious topic in the industry, um, we've set this up as a debate, pro and con, um, on the question of whether social media will be essential for the wine brands of the future. Um, I'm going to say a few opening words just to set the scene, um, and then introduce our panel, and then I'll hand it over to them um, to present their views on this question. Oh, and I should say, let's see, go back again. Should say also that if you're tweeting this session, um, as could be seen as appropriate for a session on the digital conversation, um, please use the hashtag at Provine, um, and our handle is at Wine and Tell. Um, and for those of you who aren't here for the morning session, if you'd like to tweet in Chinese, we're also on Weibo. Um, you can use the same hashtag for that, and you can find us. Um, uh, either using the English word wine intelligence or the Chinese word zhou zhe, wu ta zhou de zhou, zhou hui de zhou. I know that we have a very international audience here. Um, so to get us started, what do we mean by the digital conversation? People have been talking about wine for a long time, since before the internet. Um, the advent of the internet and our, some of our social lives moving online hasn't really changed things fundamentally. Some of those conversations are now taking place online. Most of them are still taking place offline. The ones that are taking place online, in some ways you could say that they're similar to, to what was happening before. So um, some would argue that it's not a huge revolution in terms of how ordinary consumers are interacting with wine as a category. Uh, what it does mean is that for us in the industry, there's a new platform, a new place where we can interact with consumers, and where some people are starting to find ways to interact with consumers in a, in a little bit of a different way. So there's potential for something new, uh, but so far the conversation seems to be looking relatively similar to what we've seen traditionally. Um, now the digital conversation has many faces. It means um, us talking to each other, people in the trade talking to other people in the trade, it means consumers talking to each other, so consumers recommending wines to each other, for example. It means producers talking to their consumers. Um, it has many different purposes. Sometimes it's just a hobby. Sometimes it's about promoting your brand. What we're really interested in is how can we use this conversation as an industry ultimately to drive our bottom line, to drive sales. And some of our panel might disagree with me. There could be an interesting question for debate. Um, but the big question in, uh, with this topic is how can we use the digital conversation to drive sales? Um, in terms of what the impact has been so far, there's been a little bit of a gold rush feeling around online. So we all feel that we should be there. We feel that there's a lot of potential. We're not quite sure how to do it. We're all rushing in because we don't want to lose some sort of starter's advantage. Um, but it's unclear how much of the money we're investing into this so far is turning into money in the bank for us. So if this is actually having a significant impact on our bottom line as, as wine brands. Um, in terms of how we measure effectiveness, you could argue that we should be measuring effectiveness the way we measure effectiveness for traditional uh, advertising campaigns. So some version of this funnel <coughs> is probably familiar to many of you. We start by looking at awareness of your campaign. Say, for example, that you have a new brand that you're promoting online. Have people heard of that online campaign? Then next, appeal. Is that campaign appealing to them? Is it having the type of communications impact that you wanted to have? Conversion. Are the people who see that campaign actually buying your wine? And then sales. There are some other ways to use this as well. Um, another way that the wine industry has started to use it is to get feedback from consumers. So you're creating a forum for a feedback loop where you can get comments on your product or comments on, on your sales, for example. Um, there could be other uses as well. Uh, but really, I would argue that, that we need to be holding ourselves accountable to some version of this with online. We, it shouldn't be enough just to say that we're there and it's going to be important somehow, we should be figuring out how we measure this and what we want this the ultimate impact to have to, to be, and seeing if our investment matches up to that. Um, and another way of looking at the impact is the extent to which consumers are using online sources at the moment to learn about wine. 
Um, one of the questions that we've asked in our online survey <coughs> with wine drinkers and markets across the world is where they get their information about wine. Um, we give them a list of different sources, uh, both traditional sources such as in-store information, print media, and online sources, but sort of more passive sources like websites, and then interactive sources like social media platforms and blogs. Um, and then using that, we can put together an estimate of what proportion of wine drinkers are going online to learn about wine. If we start with our Western markets, in Germany, the US, and the UK, the number is somewhere between 35 and 45 percent. The 44 percent of German wine consumers approximately going online to learn about wine, 41 percent of US consumers, 39 percent of UK consumers. Now you could argue that that's higher though depending on your perspective. Um, I'm sure our panel will have different views on that. Uh, some consumers are using it, but not everyone. If we look at Asia, on the other hand, those of you who were here this morning will have seen this chart already. The number is much higher. South Korea, it's roughly 77%. China is roughly 69%. Um, there are reasons for this, which I won't go into now, but happy to talk about if you'd like to know more about these markets afterwards. There could also be things that we can learn from the Asian markets in terms of how online campaigns are working in, in these places and uh, maybe getting a sense of the what some of the sort of future online conversation will, will look like. Now we've set our panel a set of questions to think about for this debate. Question one, in 10 years time, will we be laughing or crying over our social media investments? So this really gets to the heart of this question. Is it worth it or not? Two, what works? What types of activities or channels are translating the conversation into sales? And then three, what's the future? What, what new platforms or technologies hold the most promise? Um, and we're going to have a, a relatively informal conversation, so if you'd like to talk about other, other topics around this, um, feel, feel free to talk about what you feel is the most relevant. But these are sort of the, the key questions for us in terms of the digital conversation. Um, and the overall question is, will social media be central to the success of wine brands of the future? Um, so we have uh, two panelists who will more or less take the, the pro side, two panelists who will more or less take the con side. They've all told me that really most people are sort of in between on this question. So there's, there's on the one hand and uh, on the other hand. But we're, we're going to try to pull out the sort of two extremes of the argument as much as we can. Um, I'll just do a very brief intro introduction of our panel. Um, on the pro side, we have Andre Rinho. Um, who's founder and CEO of Adek.com, um, chief evangelist at Avin, um, unique code for each wine. We have Dave Brooks, um, former winemaker at Robert Vial Estate, um, author of the Brooks Wine Blog, which I think many of you in the audience are probably familiar with, um, and production manager at PVP Estate, Baltasar Nesapheim. Arguing against is Mike Paul, who those of you who are in the, the first panel, you've already seen a peek of some of his his um, views on uh, other issues in the, in the wine category. Um, wine business consultant, business manager, and marketing mentor at Wine Skills. And we have um, Mikael Tetken, uh, wine marketing consultant and founder of the Wine Academy Berlin, um, which again, many of you in the room here are probably familiar with. Um, I'll hand it over to the panel. And um, uh, Andre, would you mind starting us off with some of your thoughts on this topic? Thanks, Maria. Um, so I basically wanted to, to, to touch two points uh, regarding the future. And the question mentioned, you know, if, if in 10 years we'll be laughing or crying over uh, our social media investments. And, and so we have to look at the future and think what the future will be like in, in 10 years. And I basically have two things that I want to mention. Uh, one is uh, the, the much talk about uh, millennial uh, segments of, of consumers. Uh, those are the consumers, so I, I have a few numbers, especially for the, for the US market, uh, but I can tell you that they are currently uh, around 70 million uh, millennials in, in the US market, and 90% of those uh, use social media. Uh, what this means is that in, in five to 10 years, uh, this, these are people who are going to have uh, a lot more income and who are going to be uh, much more prone to, to uh, not only try new things, that's a, a new data that, that has come up uh, recently, but, but they will also uh, be, be, uh, be, um, have, have more money to spend uh, online. So uh, the other thing is that uh, from, from these uh, this 70 million uh, millennials, 43% uh, uh, actually um, um, 
buy wine on a, on a, on a more or less than, no, more than once per week. So, so that's, that's a pretty big number. And we're talking still of people who are between uh, 21 and 35 years old and who in, in, in 10 years uh, will actually uh, uh, be at the core of the, of the wine consumption market. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to, to, to talk about is social media as a communications medium is all about the relationships. And relationships are not something you do from one day to the other. It's something you build up to. So if you actually develop your social media uh, around creating relationships with future con consumers, uh, it's 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 really good way of, of building trust, of building brand, of building all this awareness uh, around this, in a way, very special uh, um, uh, way of communicating, but also uh, uh, in in a way that all these. And I've, I talked about the millennium, but there's a lot more people, of course, who are using internet these days and social media specifically, who would be interested in interacting with the brands using this medium, and of course, establish a relationship that in the future can lead to, to some sales. Uh, the last thing I would like to, to say about this question is, uh, we will probably be crying in 10 years, but we'll be crying for the reason that we didn't invest enough money at this point, because we didn't believe social media could be the future. Okay, thank you, Andre. Provocative start. Yeah. So we'll be crying because we haven't invested enough yet. Let me just jump back to, to our questions here. Um, so you feel that we, we should be doing more. Um, Mike, do you, Mike Paul, do you mind if I hand it over to you to give the con, con side of the argument first before we then Sure. Okay. Come back um, and hear another, some other reasons for. I just wonder how many producers there are in the uh, audience here. People are actually making wine rather than the service industry. Okay. Quite quite a few, although it's surprisingly uh, small amount. Anyway, um, Tim Atkin made the point. You know, he's been going around the stands uh, today, last couple of days. It is quite astonishing the diversity of, of stands out there. The numbers of producers coming to an exhibition like this is an extraordinarily humbling uh, experience, in my view, from a producer point of view. And of course, this is just the tip of the, the, the ant hill, if you like, because as an individual producer, you do just feel a bit like an ant. And we know, you know, there are 4,000 producers represented here, and, and that's just a tiny amount of the people in the world out there producing wine and trying to sell it. Now, from a marketing perspective, the fundamentals of marketing are what? It's about creating and developing a, a, a point of difference, a point of difference from which then you can make a, a better return than if you didn't bother with that uh, marketing effort in the, uh, in the first place. And yet when you look around these stands, and I'm not being you know, offensive to anyone here, the impression is of a wall of wine, not a great amount of uh, difference between the, uh, of, of the producers. When I'm in very pessimistic mood, I call it uh, lemming marketing. Okay? A lemming being an animal that looks, uh, well all lemmings to me look pretty much the same and occasionally uh, they have a tendency to jump off cliffs okay, because uh, this is a market where we have not only uh, too many producers doing exactly the same thing uh, but a, a market where there are diminishing returns. And then hey, over the horizon comes um, this white knight, this knight in shining armor called the, uh, the social media knight, okay? And suddenly you think, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. We now have an opportunity, uh, an opportunity for each producer, far more than ever in, the, in, in history, to engage, to find their niche in the market, to engage with their consumers, and to differentiate themselves uh, from, uh, uh, from each other. It's an incredible democratizing force. If the internet in general, and social media in particular, could have been developed with wine, a complex category like wine, in mind. Okay, so I, I get all this. This is about empowering producers, probably for the, for the first time. It gives the small producers the chance uh, to, without having to spend vast amounts of money on marketing, to find their niche. So, it sounds like I'm talking for it, okay? So, What's my, um, uh, what's my problem? Well, I have two problems. Um, and I'll make these opening remarks and then I'm, I've, I've got lots of kind of details I can, I can go into uh, later. But imagine you have a, um, a 50 kilometer commute to work. And this is a pretty painful process in the car. 
and you, you're driving along, it's all traffic, traffic, traffic. And somebody comes along and actually builds a motorway. So the first 40 kilometers, you sail along about 100 miles an hour. Um, and then, of course, what happens? You just get to the end, you get to the, uh, the real nasty bit of the traffic jam um, quicker, okay? And then you sit there in solid traffic. And the trouble is that it seems to me, if we're not careful, that social media will actually just get you to the traffic jam a bit faster. Because empowering producers is one thing, but actually what it's doing is empowering consumers. Because if the fundamental problem we have in this industry is that we're not very good at creating points of difference, okay? Social media is just a platform. It's just a communication channel. If we don't use it properly, then all we're going to do is bombard the consumer with more and more wines, more and more brands, which is going to be great for the consumer, but for each individual producer, actually, the, the uh, amount of competition is actually going to increase and we're not actually going to get any, uh, any further forward. So my second point is linked to that. If it is just a, a, a channel, then like all systems, you know, if you put rubbish in at one end, you get rubbish out at the other end. And when I look, when I look at the experience of website use in the wine business over the last 10 years, I can't help feeling that we've wasted an awful lot of money. And there are two great problems in the wine industry, just to finish on this bit. The, th the first is that we produce far more than we can ever sell every year, you know, which is absolute madness, okay? And, and the second is that we don't give enough emphasis to marketing. So my concern is that unless we increase our marketing skills, our marketing resource, we're going to waste this incredible opportunity. This knight in shining armor is going to come over the horizon, and as lemmings, we're not going to be around to be picked up and swept off into the sunset by this, uh, by this guy. We have really, and then in 10 years time we'll be saying, what a wasted opportunity. Because websites have been, in my view, a huge waste of opportunity. Okay, that's my opening remark. So, so it sounds like from your perspective, there isn't really anything fundamentally different about this channel. It's another way to reach out to people. What matters is what we're saying in it. No, I'm, I'm saying it's the most powerful channel we've ever had as a wine industry. It could have been designed with wine in mind. Mm -hmm. But the, my, my concern is, do we have the capability as an industry to take advantage of it? Mm -hmm. And I don't see enough. I see some people doing amazing things with social media. Mm -hmm. But I see a lot of other people who, for all kinds of reasons, are good reasons, and that they're not trained to think in that way, do not have the skills or the resource to take advantage of this, you know, this um, opportunity that's been put on their plate. Okay, well, what about you, Dick? What's, what's your view on that question? Um, uh, and you feel free either to respond directly to what Mike yeah, just said or yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 the, the first question is uh, <coughs> quite funny for me. Um, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a useless question. Um, <laughs> Uh, for, nobody will, will even talk uh, 10 seconds in 10 years about, uh, about uh, the fact that if, uh, if social media investments are uh, um, necessary or not. Um, it will be there, that's it. There will be something like Facebook, Google+, Plus, Twitter, Universal, whatever, that uh, is, uh, is a part of your daily life, that's it. What we have to do is um, we have to learn how to act and to react. In, in this in this electronic uh, world, this is the most important thing that we have to learn, and uh, this will be something where uh, we will talk about in, in ten years. Is uh, did we did we act and react in a in a social way? It's uh, it, it, you have to you always have to to remember or to, to, to think on the name. It's it's called social media, and um, the, the social behavior will be the thing. And if you do it in a correct way, um, or in, in the way that, that, that allows you to have a look in the mirror every morning, um, it will be for sure um, a wonderful uh, business success story. Okay, well, let me follow up on that in a few minutes. Can I hear your views on the question first? Yeah, the first question, um, you know, that uh, forecast is uh, especially difficult when it comes to forecasting the future. It's a problem. Um, some, some say, yeah, 
Glasgow and things mm -hmm. like this, but uh, probably a, a look back in, in, in the history may help. Um, I'm, I'm now uh, like 30, uh, 40 years in the business and uh, what I've seen and what we have seen probably in happening in different countries in these years uh, when I remember when I started in Germany, it was all focused on German wines. There were no international wines, no Van der PE, nothing. So uh, I saw the upcoming of an internationalization of the market in Germany in these years. <coughs> um, I saw upcoming uh, wines from Australia. I went through uh, um, the, the Paris tastings experience. Um, so Problem things, um, did the, all these things change uh, what, what in the fundamental, um, in the fundamentals? Uh, what we saw in all these years with the internationalization of the German market uh, here in Germany was that there is one aspect who was always prominent in the old days and who is prominent and he will be prominent in the future in the days coming, that's the price. You know that German customers are very sensible on the price and um, they know three things about uh, a product, it's price, price and price. They learned it from us and from the trade, they learned it from us and uh, like we said, always said to them, uh, it's not important what we say and what's on the labels, important is uh, when, uh, uh, if it's your taste, you will drink it and then people uh, taste it and they say, okay, it's good, and what's the price? So you're always with the price. I, I think, I think media, social media will not change this. Uh, but we must clearly say there are two markets. There is the, the base market, uh, where the price is very dominant. I personally see a, ch a chance in the other market, which is the fine wine market. In the fine wine market, I think, uh, there is uh, more money, there's more interest, there's more involvement um, and in this market people uh, like to talk, like to inform themselves and we see when we look at the figures, uh, when we look at the figures, <coughs> so um, there was a recent, your survey you did, uh, it said uh, there are 80% of wine consumers in Germany uh, who um, are on the internet, so they they use email. They they don't look into Facebook. Uh, Facebook and social media is only thirty percent of these use uh, one of these channels sometime. Um, and uh, in the end, um, oh, forty-four percent inform themselves on on the internet about uh, about wine. And uh, the question is, I'm a trade person, you excuse me, how many people buy finally? What do you think? It's a 10% of all of these have bought or, uh, some bottles over the last 12 months. So figures, that's the, the status quo. Um, yeah, what, what would be the future? I think um, the future in one market will be the price and probably in the fine wine market, uh, customer will be get more informed, they would uh, have more information and social media could open really a new channel, but it's only a new channel. Last statement from me, um, what we will see in the future, I think, um, is uh, we will have people who um, we can contact via social media, but there will be people, even in the fine wine market, who want their catalog. Yeah, evenings going through their catalog, looking at the fine wines and uh, getting the taste uh, to buy. Uh, there will people uh, be people who go to fine wine shops, who go to tastings, all the world, all the world. I think social media is just another channel will not change the industry. Okay, I'd like to pick up on that point that there's more potential for social media in the fine wine market. Um, Dirk or Andre, would either of you like to respond to that? I would love to say something, um, if it's possible. <laughs> um, let, me, let me try to explain it as a, as a wine producer. I produce a product <laughs> which is absolutely unnecessary. It costs more than five euros a bottle and it's alcohol. 
<laughs> okay, there's no need for it. It's a luxury product. Perhaps you need it if you do have uh, uh, real problems. But um, <laughs> so the one and only way for me to survive on this big German wine market is to find my unique cellular USB. Is it correct? Yeah. USB uh, is uh, is to 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 make it alive, to make it emotional. There is only one thing um, in the, for me as a producer in the fine in my fine wine market. And this is to, to, um, to convince the people that I'm a human being with emotions and uh, I'm producing an emotional product. And there is no easier way for me uh, to transport these, these, uh, this idea than using the internet for free. So it costs nothing, time for sure, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, nerves. <laughs> But um, it's it's it's. Some, I, I wake up every morning and I think it's made for me, for me and for my product that nobody needs. And I use it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And I use it and it's it's brilliant. And it's so easy. Bye, let's see, uh, Mike. It looks like you have something to say to that. Well, I was going to say, I mean, I totally agree. This is a perfect example of you as a producer being entirely comfortable with this new way of communicating with consumers. And that is astonishingly exciting. And there are thousands of producers like you. There are also thousands of other producers who are not at all comfortable with this, uh, with this new medium. And we need to train them, if yep. training is the right word, so that they become comfortable. I mean, you said, you, you get, you said um, both of you said the same thing. The key word in social media is social, okay? In, in other words, if you're going to engage with consumers through social media, through Facebook, it's much, much more complicated, much, much more complicated than engaging with them because you can't really on, on a website. This is a two-way two thing, and this interaction is exciting, but it's only exciting if you're confident in doing it. You know, I mean, just think about it. You have got to uh, tell stories. You've got to have a bit of fun. You've got to get a dialogue going with people. You've got to be, in effect, the life and soul of the party. Yeah, but there are quite a few wine producers who probably, when they go to party, they go straight to the kitchen and stay there, okay? Because they're not actually comfortable. They're not, it's not that they're anti-social, but they're not that, that comfortable. And actually, social media puts pressure on, on, on people which they need to be trained to, to deal with. The other thing you can't be, and you're clearly, you're clearly not, is oversensitive. Because the thing about social media is, once you start interacting with consumers, you're going to have, if you're a sensitive soul, you know, like me, uh, if you're a sensitive soul, you're going to have a few sleepless nights. You're going, yes. to, get, you're going to get a, you're going to get a lot of lunatics out there. You're going to get a lot of, you're going to get a lot of irrational comments. Even this is learnable. Yeah. Okay, it's learnable. But the fact is, if you're not careful what concerns me is that people may not just be turned away from it, they may make the wrong decisions on the basis of, as we all possibly do, take far too much notice of negative comment as against positive comment. If I write a blog and I get a hundred people saying, Mike, that was the most amazing article I've ever seen, not that that's happened, but if it was, and if I got five people saying, that was so bloody dull. I know, unfortunately, I would spend far too much time dwelling on the dull comments. And from a business point of view, from a business point of view, if you're using your Facebook community to do research, which in my view is an incredibly powerful tool, and you put up a few labels up there, okay, and the feedback from these, uh, uh, the, 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 the community is to go with one particular label, okay, but you also get some negative comments. A, you've got to annoy, the, you've got to ignore the negative comments, but also you've got to be quite clear that your Facebook community, your Facebook community is relevant to the decision. What really concerns me about this kind of embryonic stage we're in with social media is the, um, uh, it's the definition of the word friends. We seem to devalue the word friend, okay? Um, uh, I mean, Twitter, I, I, I read, I heard the other day that Twitter, if your brand is being followed on Twitter, 50% of the follow your followers are likely to buy the brand. And you think, hey, that's great. And then you think, no, it's not. What about those other 50%? What the hell are they doing? Why are they following my brand if they're not going to buy it? What are they going to do with it? So if you are, so if, if it's a sale on Facebook, okay, and you're researching your, let's say, a label, 
and you find that 50% like a label one, 30% like another one, you've got to be clear that the, the people who like that label are not a part of the anti-alcohol league, for a start, you know, and not following your brand because they like some other things they do. They may not even drink bloody wine, okay? So you've got to be a bit careful. You've been, got to be a bit more sophisticated in taking some of the things you read at face value. And that's where the training and the, the education, <coughs> if I may use that word, uh, comes into it. Sorry to go on a bit. <laughs> So one of the things I wanted to say, it's probably the, the most important uh, point in, in my answer to that, is people are already talking about your brand. Yeah. So it's happening already. Sure. And sometimes they'll make mistakes talking about your brand because you're not there to provide them with good information. Yeah. So by not being there, you're failing at doing that and you're not even engaging them. Sometimes even a good website with good information will help them share the, the right stuff. The other thing is, I do have to admit that in social media sometimes, uh, we have to do a better job of explaining the advantages and, and, and the use of social media to a producer who for the last maybe 40 years has been thinking about, oh, I send this nice press release every once in a while and I buy an expensive advertising in some wine magazine and hopefully it will get me some brand attention. Yeah. So we do have to do a better job of doing that. But if you're not there, it's already happening. The other, the other thing that I wanted to say is social media is definitely not a silver bullet. You know, it's not going to solve all your problems and make uh, all even the bad wines sell online you know, free. It doesn't happen that way. But there's a lot of examples, and we'll get to that on the second question, but there's a lot of examples where social media uh, correctly used is being, is, is being used to promote and <laughs> sell more wine for the, for the producers that are actually using it. Sure. So. Okay, let's talk about some of the examples. Could we start maybe with some examples of what doesn't work? We don't need to name any names. But what's the wrong way to do this? Well, Mika, can I ask you to uh, The wrong way, yeah. F first of all, I have to say that it's really important. It's a new channel, um, and uh, we have to, to learn how it works. <laughs> we have to learn a, a new language, probably. Um, uh, we have to connect <laughs> now with to connect uh, with the directly with the consumer. And uh, here, here were some examples. I'm running a blog club since on wine marketing since four years now, um, and it's uh, read by uh, all marketing people all over the industry. And I get a lot of feedback on my articles, and uh, it's, it's very good because uh, that to me it's not only information, but it's uh, it gives me things to think about and. Stuff, but um, what happens uh, once I had an article um, on uh, alcohol? We had last year we had a, uh, the start of an anti-alcohol campaign, which was launched by the state here in Germany. Um, the, the colleagues from from the UK know the problem. Uh, you are in much more problems than we are in, for the moment. But uh, I, I wrote an article on this one, and then and then there were not colleagues commenting on this one from the uh, from the business but anti-alcohol people so I had in uh, a few uh, minutes I had 20 comments on each um, rattling along on uh, what alcohol uh, demon like is and <coughs> that I'm uh, some uh, person driving people into you know so Okay, this can happen to brands. We have seen this recently, not in the wine business, but uh, we have seen uh, that on Facebook for, of the ING Bank in Germany. Um, uh, probably you know the basketball player, Dirk Nowitzki, um, very famous basketball first league in the US. And um, they uh, did a testimonial on a small film on the telly with him. Um, and he's uh, coming in home in, uh, back in his hometown and um, entering a, a butcher's shop and talking to the people which he knows from uh, yeah, from childhood and so on. And um, it says, okay, you feel at home in comfort, where the place where you were born and where you know how things work and people you know and so and stuff. And um, what happened? What happened on Facebook was that vegetarians and uh, um, people like this, no, that's a serious problem. It was all the PR branch and all these people who are working on PR on, in, uh, in the business. Um, 
have serious problems with what to do in this moment. We don't know, so it's a new language. What happened is the ING bank account was blocked for three weeks, and there were only discussion on vegetarian issues and uh, non slaughtering and things, and what Novitsky is a guy, and all that stuff. So, yeah. That could happen very quickly if, uh, to yourself and you, um, with my example, with these anti-alcoholic people, you see. So, uh, we have to learn how to react on, on these things. And um, the last thing which uh, does not work, actually, <coughs> you said the first question, it was about crying, crying over social media. I think everybody here in the room who is running a Facebook page is actually crying about Facebook because all in its investment is gone. End of month, uh, the, um, uh, the, the Facebook page, your corporate page, will turn to uh, what you have seen in your personal profile uh, in the uh, beginning of this year. So it will turn into a completely another page, so no more landing pages, nothing. It will be a, an agenda of your company, a chronic, so you can spend the, um, uh, all the money you have invested in your Facebook page another time because it's, uh, what you have spent is completely useless and you, we don't have any influence, for example, on Facebook. Facebook does what they want um, and not what, uh, what you want from them. So <laughs> they want your money. And, and uh, yeah, probably a little bit controversial statement, but uh, I'm a little bit upset with this because it all happened. You know, the first announcement from Facebook was in like uh, in October, yeah, and then nothing, and then you get a message saying, okay, uh, in a fortnight it will be turned. So, okay. So there's some unpredictability yeah. there. Yeah. Do you, what in your view works and what doesn't work? Uh, um, <laughs> I really do not know where I should start now. Um, it's, it's, it's too much for my little um, uh, farmer brain. Um, <laughs> first of all, I have to say that for me there's absolutely no difference between the social, digital life and the social, real life. And, um, and, uh, and I cannot understand why I, why I do have to make a difference between these two relationship areas. I act in the social media or network or whatever in the same way as I do it in the real life. I would never ever give some, or, or, or would you give me your uh, your uh, bank uh, account information? No. Would, would you love to tell me what your sexual uh, preference is? <laughs> no. So why, why the hell should I do it in the, in, 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 when, when I do not do strange crazy things in real life, I, 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 there's no need to do it in the, in the in the uh, in the digital life, um, and okay, Facebook is doing s strange things, but who cares? Thanks, Facebook, for the last three years, and uh, welcome, Face Room, Face whatever. Who cares? The next thing is coming, and we we go on and on and on. It was for free. It was a fantastic uh, tool. It is a fun. Oh, yeah, you pay with your information, but you know it for sure. It's not for free. You the always customer. pay and with your information. I uh, do a lot of investment. That's a company. Yeah. Yeah, Nobody forced you. In the whole. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it was it was it was your choice to to go yeah. into to use this as a as a, as a marketing yeah. thing or whatever or as a business uh, platform. Um, and now, for sure, you pay with with all your dates and everything. But uh, hell, they have to earn money. Uh, it's like Google and Amazon. These guys. Uh, 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 quite uh, clever. But I think we should say to people, uh, look what could happen and be careful. Yes, for sure. What we have to do, and this is one of the most important things for me, and this will be will be the challenge for the next 10 years, to, to, to educate the people <coughs> from the beginning, in school, in, 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 in things like uh, social competence. If you if you if you're not able to act in a social way, and this is something that your your kids have to learn, the best way would be in the school. Um, you will you you will never ever survive, not in real life, and absolutely not in the digital life. Okay. Yeah, no, we, we just have a few minutes left, so quick comment yeah. from you, Andre. Just want to add two two quick things. One is 
the word control is, is, is very much in discussion here. Uh, because the way traditional media used to work is you're in control, or at least you think you are in control, and, and, and basically the message is one way. Not anymore. Like I said before, your consumers are already talking about your brand. It's happening already. And they might be even saying crazy things, but you might, in a way, create a space for them to be more friendly. And it's the same way, like, uh, they, they can come to one of uh, your tastings or one of uh, tastings you organize and come to you and say, your wine sucks, you know? But most people won't do it, you know? And even online, they'll kind of behave. There might be, of course, a few examples of people who won't do that, but most people will behave. The second example that I wanted to give is, I organized this, uh, this tasting event uh, back in Portugal, and we didn't have any money to spend on, on marketing. And so most of our um, community is, is on Facebook. And we organized, and so we, didn't, we spent some of our time organizing that page on Facebook and getting all the followers and posting news and all that. Well, we ended up doing a 1,000 people event that sold 2,000 bottles in seven hours, only based on Facebook. So, you know, it's a, I know it goes to the second question, but, but it, it's, it's, you know, it's a good example. And of course someone can go there and say, oh, it was too warm in the, in the place and everything. But actually there, I have a possibility of replying, say, hey, I'm really sorry, this happened this way, you know, next time I can give you a free ticket to try to compensate for the, for the problem. Okay, let's go down the line very quickly and do a, a, just a few words on question three. What's the future? Um, Miquel, if I start with you, just very briefly, what do you think holds the most promise in terms of new technology? Um, we will see new technologies coming up, um, even in social media. Uh, if you're now actually looking at things like, which are more uh, trade and marketing or nearer to trade and marketing like Pinterest for example it's all visual uh, there's no more text uh, um, uh, no more arguments but only pictures and uh, animating things so I think we will see a lot of things coming up it's uh, actually it's Facebook but uh, for the future it will be completely different and I think it would go more into the visual world so we would uh, to have to deal with more um, images and more video. Okay, Mike? Well, I think it's going to be um, about m commerce, mobile phones, um, and uh, I, I think that revolution hasn't even started. Um, there's something called mass one to one marketing, okay, which is the ideal for any brand owner that they can actually market to individual people. Perhaps at the moment they are shopping on or, on or offline, they can say, we notice you've done this, well, what about this, etc., etc. That is, uh, we, I mean, <coughs> we are going to look back in five years' time and think that social media as it stands, or the way brand owners communicate with us as individuals, was just so clunky. And I think what one of the other points I'd make is that you still hear people saying, you've got to have websites. I mean, I'm thinking, well, websites, they're going to become, not irrelevant, but they're going to become a side issue because we've kind of moved on from that. A website may be something you use to, uh, for the trade, you know, for your trade marketing, but actually we're going to move away from, uh, um, from web marketing to something which is much more interactive. And, and for a lot of people, that's what I'm saying. This is a, this is a, a scary prospect and we have to make it a lot less scary, okay? Not so many acronyms, okay, not so much of the bullshit. Let's talk about what it really means to take advantage of these new technologies. And third, uh, but definitely not least, is I think um, not consumer-oriented, but more professionally-oriented tools that manage uh, wine data to make sure that we all manage the, the same data across all the retailers. And, and, and it's, it's, it's hard enough to update social media. Every time you need to send a new PDF with a technical sheet to, to, to a new uh, you know, journalist or somewhere else, it's really a big mess. Uh, we, we work on that area, so I know that area pretty well. And I think it's not going to be very visible for the consumer, but it's going to be very useful. So. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, let's continue this debate online. We have a drinks reception waiting for you outside. Um, if you have more questions, we have, let's see, let me our hashtag again. Um, you can use the hashtag Turbine and continue discussing this topic. We'll be around as well as the discussion.